So you want to buy the best performance per buck motorcycle on the planet. You want it to be fast, feather light, handle great, sound like a World War II fighter plane, have decent electronics and of course bulletproof reliability. Fear not, I have your ride. The only question is, do you want it in Japanese racer boy modern or hipster open face helmet and goggles neo retro? The Yamaha MT-09 and XSR900 are extremely similar, so close that some claim they are the same bike with different headlights and seats. Not true. I've spent a week putting about a thousand miles on each machine and I can tell you they have their distinct personalities and quirks. If you want to know which one to get, stay tuned for all the details. And if you enjoy the content, please subscribe, give the video a like and share it with someone who might find it interesting. First, let's go over the similarities of the two bikes because there are many. They both share the same engine, Yamaha's amazing 889cc CP3 triple cylinder mill which churns out 117 horsepower and 69 pound-feet of torque. There is a reason riders have fallen in love with this engine in the various Yamaha models it powers. This thing rips quite a bit harder than the numbers indicate due to the low gearing and massive mid-range hit which arrives early right where it is felt most on the street. In the twisties this engine rockets from corner to corner emitting the angry aggressive growl that only triples are capable of. These bikes are not relaxing but their hooligan tendencies are addictive. There was one slight difference between these motorcycles power delivery that I did notice. I tested the MT-09 in 2021 when it first got this engine and the XSR900 in 2022 when it first received it and noticed a flat spot in the power band at 5000 RPM on the MT that I didn't feel on the XSR a year later. It could be that Yamaha was still working out the fueling in the first year and had it dialed in by 2022. This is not scientifically tested, but my butt told me that the 2021 MT version flattened at 5000 RPM and went to warp drive at 7000, while the 2022 XSR version felt more linear and less frantic at the same engine speeds. Other similarities? Basically both motorcycles share the same frame and suspension with the exception of the swing arm which I'll get to later. The massive frame is stiff and makes the bike feel extremely solid while leaned over. The KYB suspension and Nissan brakes are not top of the line but perform very well for motorcycles in this price range. There is a more expensive SP version of the MT-09 which comes with an upgraded KYB fork and sweet Olin's shock but that adds some serious bucks to the price. Both motorcycles also have smallish 14 liter tanks with a 300 km range while riding easy and about 250 riding hard realistically 250 because no one will ride these bikes easy. Furthermore, both bikes share an impressive electronic suite for this price range with four power modes, two traction control modes and a six axis IMU controlling lean sensitive ABS and traction control. Both also have wheelie control and while I generally found all of these systems to be unobtrusive, I did find the user interface to be needlessly convoluted. I had to go through several steps to switch engine power and traction control modes and would have preferred them to be integrated into sport, touring and rain mode like most other bikes. If you want riders to dial it in themselves, offer an additional user mode. So thus far in the video you might be under the impression that the only real differences between the MT-09 and the XSR900 are cosmetic, but not so. The prices are similar but the XSR does cost a bit more. The MT-09 costs 9,800 MSRP in the US and 11,900 in Canada, while the XSR900 will run you 10,200 US and 12,800 Canadian. Yes, for some reason you only pay 400 more for the XSR in the US and 900 more in Canada. Weird. Our dollar is weak up here, but not that weak. This price discrepancy can be explained by the fact that the SXR has cruise control and the base MT-09 doesn't. The MT-09 SP has cruise control and upgraded suspension but costs the most out of all of these bikes at 11,500 US and a whopping 14,700 Canadian. Again, for some reason, Canadians pay a hefty premium. The weights of these motorcycles are close with the MTs weighing 417 pounds wet while the XSR adds 8 pounds and tips the scales at 425. Honestly, that's feather light for this class and I felt no difference on the road. 
Both are lighter than a Suzuki SV650, which has 52 less horsepower. Seat heights are equally comparable with the MT-09 seat at 32.5 inches and the XSR surprisingly lower at 31.9. Both bikes are relatively accessible for shorter riders. Now we come to the big mechanical difference between the two, and this is the one that makes them diverge in the handling department. The XSR900 has a 2.5 inch longer wheelbase. This is over 6.3 centimeters, and that is significant enough to make this motorcycle have a different character from the MT-09. You see, the MT-09 has a reputation for being a crazy hooligan wheelie monster. It is twitchy and wild, and it wants to power wheelie down every straightaway. You always feel like you're fighting it when you're riding it hard, and it is this characteristic that really sets it apart from many of the other bikes in its class. It feels on the edge and provides some wild thrills. The XSR900 is a fast, aggressive motorcycle that handles very well and compares favorably to almost any other motorcycle in the 900-ish CC naked class, but those two and a half extra inches settle it down. The front wheel doesn't want to shoot up when you whack open the throttle in quite the same way. It's way more stable under hard acceleration because the front wheel has better traction. It's slower to turn in and transition from side to side. It is a great motorcycle, just not quite as wild as the MT-09. You can definitely be a hooligan on it, it just falls a little behind its sibling in the anti-social department. Where it doesn't fall behind is in looks. Let's keep it real, the MT-09 looks like it fell off the ugly tree and hit every branch on the way down. Even owners who love their MTs tend to tacitly admit this fact. The front light sits too high and looks unfinished. You could stick a fly screen to make the situation less bad, but less bad isn't good. Other than that, the rest of the bike looks decent. If you could get a good looking aftermarket headlight, you might save this motorcycle. The MT-09 with an XSR headlight may just be the perfect naked bike. So yes, I prefer the look of the XSR 900's headlight. I also love the blue color option. Both bikes offer several choices. The XSR also rocks bar end mirrors, which in my opinion both look and function better than the standard mirrors on the MT-09. With these, your elbows and shoulders don't get in the way of your view. One small criticism that I have of the new XSR is the display. It is taken off the MT-09, and while it is visible and decent looking, for a Neo Retro bike, I'd prefer something round and analog. However, I'm sure Yamaha saves money on sharing parts between the two models, and the shared display probably keeps the XSR's price reasonable, so it's not a big deal. The part of the XSR 900 that has received the most criticism in my comments section is the seat. The step saddle is quite different from the previous model XSR, which had a seat closer to the MT-09s. I have to admit, when I first saw it in pictures, I didn't like it either, but seeing the bike in the flesh changed my mind. The saddle is well made, looks high quality from close up, and does a nice job of locking the rider in place under hard acceleration. Additionally, my wife Brooke preferred riding on the back of the XSR. She said that the back seat was more comfortable and liked that it was higher because it provided her with more legroom and a better view of the road ahead. Still, if you're adamant that you don't like it, you could go to the aftermarket for a different style seat or a cowling to cover up the rear hump for that cafe look. So which one should you get? If you want a wild ride that makes you clench that sphincter, it's the MT all the way. This is one of the most lively bikes you can buy and it's honestly hard to believe that you can get the base model for under 10,000 US or under 12K Canadian. The dollar per unit of fun you get with this bike is off the charts, and if you don't like that headlight, you can either console yourself with the knowledge that you won't see it from the saddle, or change it. As for the XSR900, it does look better and is more stable during acceleration. It's still super fast and handles well, and generally feels better planted. It was my impression that the saddle and handlebars put the rider further back on the bike, and that the seating position was a bit roomier, so taller riders might want to choose this one. And if you absolutely need cruise control, this is the bike to get, unless you want to spring the extra dough for the MT-09 SP. Finally, if you don't like that saddle, you can either console yourself with the knowledge that you won't see it when you ride the bike, or change it. So which one would I choose? The XSR900. It's plenty fast and fun, I like the headlight better, I like the cruise control, and I'm old. I don't need to feel like I'm on the jagged edge all the time. 
The XSR is plenty thrilling while also being capable of more sedate riding if that's what you want to do. If you want more details, please check out my individual reviews of each bike. So if you're having a hard time deciding, I hope this video helped. Which one would you go for? Or would another Naked or Cafe strike your fancy? Please share your thoughts in the comments below. And if it's warm enough for you live to still be riding, stay safe. If you're interested in any of the gear that Brooke and I wear or use, or the camera equipment we use to film this channel, the links are below. Everything listed there was bought with our own money and we are not sponsored by any company. However, the links below are affiliate links and the channel has paid a small amount for referring you to shop at no additional cost to you. We do not recommend any products that we are not satisfied with ourselves, but we do strongly urge you to do your research and select the correct size for items like helmets and clothing. As always, thanks for watching, your support is greatly appreciated. Please hit that subscribe button, give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment below. And whatever you ride, enjoy it. Wave at other bikers no matter what they're riding, we're all part of a brotherhood and sisterhood. Keep the rubber side down, shiny side up, and may the spokes be with you.